Hey boys. Let's go work out. Let's do it. Go. Mama, Papa gonna do fitness, okay? All right, here we are, Coach's Roundtable, episode 11, I think, is where we're at. Yeah, right, 11. Uh, and we have a special guest with us today. We've got Street Parking OG member and uh, owner of Basic Bowl Nutrition um, is your business. And just somebody who has a ton to say on the mental side of eating. I mean, all of the sides of nutrition, but what I really love about her work is when she talks about some of the mental and emotional blocks that we have when we're trying to make changes. Shanique Allen. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah, Shanique's from Seattle. So she um she didn't drive down here. Actually, she was smart and flew and didn't put herself through that long drive all alone. But she's here with us for a few days to uh, help us with some of our nutrition content for the upcoming Jacked by June. And we had to wrangle her into Coach's Roundtable Shanique is from Jamaica, but currently living in Seattle. So tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into nutrition before we dive into this sabotaging topic. Hi, everyone. Um, I got into nutrition. Well, I'm from Jamaica, uh, a competitive athlete, a college athlete, and got into the gym when I needed to get stronger and got hooked. So that's where it started for me in terms of fitness. In terms of nutrition, I started dieting or entering competitions, really, um, somewhere around maybe my last year in college. And it snowballed into um, it becoming kind of a way of life. And then life happens, you know, you get a little older. So that continued for a couple of years. And then I started to train and work with people. And the nutrition side of it was missing. So I started to incorporate the nutrition piece and, you know, help transform people's lives, getting them to have better nutrition, having more consistent, healthy eating habits. And then life kind of happened where I no longer ended up doing that. And I needed to change my nutrition approach because it no longer fit. And that's brought me to basic bowl right now. So... I went from being super complicated and into the dieting and the precision and the nitty gritty of, you know, dialing, making sure I had my macros right and all of that to just keeping it pretty simple. So that simplicity is what I bring to the clients I work with, but my own life, my own life. So Yeah, and we've talked to like a little bit today. So Shanique and I, well, all of us just met, met Shanique in person finally for the first time today. We've had some time to chat and a lot of the ways that she believes about nutrition and also fitness just, I mean, completely coincides with street parking and our message and everything. Um, and so, yeah, let's get, let's dive into, I wanted you to specifically talk about, because I, as I mentioned, I love a lot of the stuff that you talk about on your Instagram about the mental side, about um, the struggles that people have just to make change. And one of the things that we've talked about is how they overcomplicate it and they they overthink it. We've all been there. Like we've talked about that a lot on this show is we've all been the macro counters and the like super precise in our training and in nutrition. And all of us here have come to this like, it's so much more simple than it needs to be. So Chanique picked these five topics and she made it very clear she could keep going with like so many more, but we know that we, uh, we like to dive into these things, so we'll see how far we can get with these five and then obviously uh, get some questions at the end. 
five ways you are sabotaging sabotaging your own progress. So the very first one that Shanique gave us was paying attention to other people's progress or other people's plates. Nicole went ahead and made that into the OPP. Thank you, Nicole, for that nice little joke. So what what are people doing? What's this one all about? Exactly what it says, paying attention to other people's plates. So this is where people take a vested interest in what is someone else is eating. So the what I eat in a day vlogs are very popular. Or if someone says I'm doing or I'm having these results, the first thing someone's going to ask is, so what do you eat? And then they want to know exact things like how often do you eat? You know, how much of things you eat? When quite frankly, what someone else eats has no bearing on my own life. So if I spend all my time focusing on Julian's plate, I have no time to, you know, pay attention to my own. So I can't measure things or manage things properly and therefore stop sabotage my own self. Alex, have you fallen victim to trying to copy someone else's what I eat in a day type routine? Um no, not in not in that sense, not like in I guess portion sizes. I'm a fan of um of um what other people eat, but but solely for inspiration. Um I'm like, you know, because I eat a lot of the same things. And sometimes I'm open to changing it up a little bit, keeping things interesting. So I appreciate when other people share what they eat, but I can also appreciate getting so caught up on the nuances, like you were saying, and how frequently, how much, what are, what's the macro breakdown of this meal versus, you know, what I'm looking at are what are the ingredients making up this meal and how can I incorporate that into my own, um, my own diet. But, um, yeah, no, luckily I don't think I've fallen back into that. Yeah. Yeah. One of the things too, when, um, when you start paying attention to what other people eat, you, you start thinking that's what you need to do, but you need to realize that when it comes to nutrition, it is so unique to you as an individual because you don't know what that person's goals are, you know, based off of what they're putting together in their meal, right? Um, and then also, you know, what is that person's lifestyle as well? Uh, what happens if that person's eating things that you don't like? Then what are you going to do, right? So as you get older or you start, you know, you take the first steps that you need to into figuring out what it is that you need to eat, then you start understanding, oh, well, I'm a big fan of citrusy food. So why don't I just prep my food with like salt, pepper, and lime and pick the veggies that I like, right? Because again, if you start focusing too much on, um, you know, somebody else's play and you see stuff that, that you don't like, no, I'm not going to do that. And then now you've already disconnected from what that individual's doing on their own, which is putting together a plate that is good for them. And it's a nice, well-balanced bowl. So just understanding that the sooner you can get to understanding what are the foods that you truly enjoy, so that way you can make your bowls for yourself and then, you know, get excited about eating the next meal. So, and I think like <laughs> in the street parking community, I am the guiltiest party of causing problems <laughs> in our community because I've done several, what I eat in a day, what I eat in a week. I mean, the, the breakfast has just gotten out of control. The, the oatmeal, egg whites, blueberries, you know, like people try to copy it. Like how many blueberries? Was it 12 blueberries or 11, blue, you know? And they just get so, and when I show that stuff, my goals from it are exactly like what Alex is using it for. I just want to show how simple and repetitive my eating is mm. so that people don't think that I'm over here like making a different street parking recipe every single day. Um, Cause that's not realistic for me in my life. Not that that would be wrong. So my goal with it is always to show how simple it is, but people take it to the extreme of like, they want to know exactly how many blueberries and which flavor of perfect bar do you eat? And then Molly's calling me being like, stop telling people to eat perfect bars. Cause that doesn't work for everyone, <laughs> you know, and now they think it does or whatever. So what are some of the like physiological differences that people have that make it so that looking at what I eat or what, or what Julian eats or what you eat doesn't work for everyone. I think he mentioned the, not liking the same food, which I think is a big one. What are some other ones? Um, yeah, not liking the same foods is big, but also paying attention to your body. I think a lot of people don't have that awareness because they're caught up in what 
everybody else is eating or what is on someone else's plate or how someone else eats that they completely miss any signs and signals that their body gives them. For instance, energy is a big thing. Someone might think they need to have the same breakfast as you and oatmeal. When I eat oatmeal, for instance, I have to use it a little bit because if I eat probably the same amount, I get super full really fast and it becomes uncomfortable. Now, somebody else is going to see that. They're going to be like, well, I need to eat the same thing that Miranda does, but it makes them completely uncomfortable. And it's a chore every time. So they're not paying attention to that cue. Mm -hmm. I am full. So maybe I need to swap oatmeal out for something else or try something else. So paying attention to your body's own cues is something I think people miss when they do that. The other thing also is, an aware, and again, it's an awareness. This is awareness cue. It's an awareness of what's available to you. So if you're so caught up in eating blueberries and oatmeal, maybe you're in a place or you live somewhere where blueberries aren't available. What else can I use? You know what I mean? So um, I know those two things are very, very important that people often miss. Body signals, that's the biggest one. Um, your energy levels, and that impacts your energy um as well so the other thing too so for instance um protein coffee that's something i love right <laughs> i'll use that but i know other people can't have the caffeine because it does crazy things to them but because julian has protein coffee all the time everybody's going to pay attention to that and then want to incorporate it into their lives when caffeine makes them go crazy or creates other kinds of kinds of things like jitters um, I know I get very irritable when I have caffeine. So again, it goes back to the body. So you have those physical cues. Your sleep might be affected by the way you eat also. For instance, another thing as it relates to sleep, um, eating at a certain time of night, for instance. And you know, people will say they probably won't eat after certain hours. But if you're starving before you go to bed, that's a cue that maybe I need to eat something, maybe light, but give me some fullness, not fullness full to the point of being uncomfortable but going to bed starving isn't helpful because you're going to wake up in the middle of the night being extremely hungry and then you wake up tomorrow being miserable irritated your sleep was affected so having that awareness is something that people miss when they pay attention to other people's plates yeah that's what i was going to say the schedule thing too because people will ask a lot like how many meals should i have a day how many times do you eat how far before your workout do i need to eat before i work out if i work out in the morning what should i eat how much of this and they try to copy exact schedules too where people's appetites vary depending on the person and what their day looks like and everything so fitting in five meals versus three versus four versus whatever and copying that might not be the best for you and your schedule yeah it's so unique in nutrition is unique as you julian said it is unique and i think that people would need to have at the forefront of their mind when they're attempting to make any change which means how it looks on your plate is not going to be the same as on mine how it looks in your life is going to look very different from how it looks in mine so that awareness of it's going to be different is something that I think a lot of people probably should be aware of or like I wish people would just like people with diet programs should say up front side effects may include <laughs> and list all of the things that you may suffer as a result of doing a particular diet or trying to copy somebody else's diet these side effects. Well, and I think what we're to, we try to do um, in the nutrition challenges and I know what you try to do as well is have an education go along with it. So um, we were talking about earlier where if somebody was trying to copy me completely and they ran out of avocado, they'd be like, oh my gosh, like I'm, I'm, what am I gonna do? Like I don't have this specific ingredient where what we would prefer is that people see avocado, that's fat. What do I have that is fat and how can I swap that out for what I have or um, what I like or anything like that. And I know at breakfast today, we were talking about when you lived in uh, Jamaica and you were working with a coach who gave you a foods list and the problems that you ran in. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, being in Jamaica, it what you have access to is different from someplace else, like being in the US. So fruits, for example, things like berries, strawberries, blueberries, raspberries, those things are not common. It's not it's a tropical island and we don't have those unless you go up in the mountains where that's rare. Um, so 
getting a food list from a coach, a nutrition coach saying, these are the foods that you need to eat. Blueberries, strawberries, raspberries was missing. So, okay, it's missing. Now, what am I supposed to do? You know, as opposed to saying, what kind of fruits do you have available? This is what use the fruits in this way. So that presented a challenge for me, but being the questioner that I am, I'm like, I'm going to use what I have anyway. So I use what was available. So this is something that people should also bear in mind that what you see on a food list might not apply to you. Does not mean that what you have available is not applicable. Does that make sense? So use what you have and the print and the, this is my mantra. Use what you're ha use what you have all the time. It's the same fruit. Fruits a fruits a fruit. Absolutely. I mean, it's the same thing that we talk about with your with the workouts, right? You only have dumbbells available. Like, use the dumbbells. Use what you have. Load a backpack up with some stuff and use that if that's what you need to use. And read. That's where again, like, it's the education. What we're looking for is vegetables. What we're looking for is fruit. Here's a list maybe of some examples. But if you have a vegetable that you love that's not on the list it's still good to go like go for it and that's where people need the education and what we were talking about is people want to be told exactly what to do with so they don't have to think at all and that's not going to lead to sustainability um or your ability to like you know live your life and just figure it out yourself <laughs> exactly and that kind of leads to the next one so the next one um the way that people are sabotaging their progress is that they're trying to be too perfect. Talk about what that one's all about. Trying to be too perfect, meaning never missing a thing. So if, for instance, they're trying to eat, you know, four meals, let's use template. You're trying to eat your four meals. You're trying to make sure your portions are exact. And for whatever reason, you miss a meal or you miss a component of a meal or you are not able to eat on time or eat at the time you intended. That then turns into oh my god i screwed up i might as well just say f it and go on a bender or you know decide that i screwed up and it means i'm no good it means that i can't stick with this it means i'm a failure it means i'll never get it right and it just snowballs into things that it does not need to snowball into so the whole idea when you're trying to make nutrition changes is imperfectly doable this is something i say imperfectly doable is better than perfectly not done mm. so if it means that you don't have all the components in your meal if you have the major ones you're good it means if you didn't get to four meals but you got to three great if it means you got 80 ounces out of the 100 you intended to drink it still counts the bottom line is it still counts. Every little bit still counts, whether it's one small piece or you get a big chunk out of it, it still counts. Mm -hmm. So trying to be perfect is one of the biggest ways people sabotage themselves. Have you gone hardcore, like super measured, trying to be perfect ever, Alex? I feel like you're always the even keel person in this group. Uh, I mean, I did. So my history with nutrition is that I started with the zone diet, probably not the best place to start. I'll be completely honest. Um, and that changed that transitioned into paleo zone, which was almost unattainable. I mean, it was expecting too much. Um, and I love that you brought this up because and I think it's was it the last coach's table that w it was about get your shit together. And the fourth step, I it originally was written as um, don't try to be perfect or something. And I, I said, we need to change that to expect imperfection. In my head, that's different from like, oh, you know, you may not be perfect. It's like, no, you need to like accept that you are going to mess up. Like it's delusional to think that life isn't gonna happen, that things aren't gonna go wrong in your day and you're gonna miss a meal or something like that. So I think when, I, for me, if I'm in the mindset of, yeah, like I'm gonna have slip ups, then it comes from a place of compassion versus expecting myself to be perfect. And then the shame and the guilt that comes along with having a slip up when I was holding a delusional thought in my head to begin with, like that's just not possible. So let's start with something that's more realistic. I think, I think people, once they get a list or get an idea that say four meals, for instance, it becomes instantaneous that I need to hit this 
exactly as it is. So I need to check everything off the list. I need to make sure it's as written or else. Mm. So first of all, we need to throw out the perfection word. There's no such thing, regard, no matter how precise you get. It's just life. That's just the way life is. And I think if we embrace that fact, then I think we'll be a lot better off and we'll save ourselves a whole lot of stress. I think people do that with workouts too, right? Yeah. Like they look at a workout and they're like, well, this is the workout. So, uh, you know, if it takes me an hour to, to get it done because, you know, the deadlift weight is 155, but my max is 165, then that's just how it's going to be. And I think people in the street parking community have worked so diligently at adopting the more than nothing mindset to their fitness and have uh, opened up and accepted the idea of customizing their workouts. And I think the next the next frontier is doing the same thing with their nutrition. I talk about often, you know, when it comes to our workouts, fitness freedom, right? And how that's allowed me to always enjoy working out, even on the days where if I look at a street parking workout and I'm like, I don't feel like doing this movement with a barbell or well, then I'll customize it and I'll grab a sandbag. Or if I want to up it to glory days or go lighter, I mess around with the workout so much it's the template right the template that works for the general audience of our you know um of our membership for people in general it's the same approach to nutrition right once you have an understanding of what a template looks like you know don't get so glued into that because then you're setting yourself up for failure because you know what happens in the days that you're exhausted and you don't feel like eating your third meal or want to eat a a meal that is so well put together with this and that there's times at night where honestly i might have my breakfast for dinner right or if i don't even feel like eating carbs well then i will have an egg white omelet with steak and avocado and not put the carbs in there is that a bad meal absolutely not you know so again it takes awareness like shanique was saying in order for you to get to a place where you can make those decisions on the fly without it consuming so much of your time you pay attention to how you feel i don't feel like eating this tonight i'm gonna you open the fridge you see what's available to you and then piece something together and then call it a day and then move on right and then get back onto your routine the next day and then just stick the course and that is the kind of consistency that we pitch for you guys to look for and you guys should strive for as well because once you are able to customize things for you as an individual that is where you've become in a very good place but you know you know why though why everyone is stuck on this need to perfect it to need to do it as is it all boils down to trying to change your body to look a particular way mm -hmm. that's the number one motivation and as long as that's the motivation people are always going to be stuck on if i don't do it perfectly as written i won't attain the body or i won't get the abs or i won't you know look as lean as you know so and so or xyz so that we could talk about that all day but the bottom line is a lot of people are stuck on that mm. aim to be perfect because in doing so there's a promise or an implied promise that is going to lead to the body of their dreams. Well, and I think like, I mean, I've seen people, I remember, and I don't know what really is popular outside of the street parking community as much as I used to be aware of it, but when macros were like, I don't know, around like 2015, I want to say macros, at least in the circle of friends that I had were really big, but people were doing some crazy stuff. Like they'd be like, oh my gosh, I'm like 50 grams of carbs, like shy for today. So they would like pop this massive thing of popcorn and like eat it or a bowl of cereal right before bed. instead of just being like, whoops, like my carbs were a little bit too low today. Like I'll do better tomorrow or I'll figure out how, where to add that. Into like they would force feed themselves at night or they would save they they would know that they were going to get like that they were going to have a massive steak at night so they wouldn't eat protein like all day long so that they could like save all their i mean it was like weight watchers points at that <laughs> and it was and it was kind of crazy and you could see the mental side of it was like i mean it's got to be some sort of eating disorder at that point to be that particular about it and to be that like looking into the app and if you're one gram shy like measuring out the like two kernels of popcorn to make sure that it's mm -hmm. perfect it was kind of nutty um and then kind of piggybacking off of what you said about 
people, you know, wanting like the certain body type or, or that sort of thing. I feel like, you know, there's, there's such a mental and emotional side where they assume like, if I only had this body or if I only could stick to this, then I would be happy. Like when you're working with people, how do you help them recognize? Cause I don't think people, most people recognize that that's like such an issue that I'm just like chasing some form of happiness that I think comes with a body type. How do you help them with that? Well, I'll, you'll always, you hear me use the word awareness and it starts by just being aware of what exists, what, about your body right now makes you unable to do the thing you want to do. Because if that's what you're chasing, let's address that elephant in the room. What are you waiting for? What's in the way? What's stopping you? What are the things preventing you from doing the things you say you want to do if only you had the body that you are going after? And let's talk about that. Let's flesh it out. And most of the times you find that what they're aiming for is stuff that they can do right now because the body does not guarantee the ability to do those things or being able to suddenly, you know, feel any different because people also assume that if they get the body, then they'll suddenly have the confidence that they'll mm -hmm. suddenly ask for what they want. Well, if you can't ask for what you want now, wearing a size five jeans is not going to give you the ability to ask for it because you're just the same person, just in a smaller body. Yeah. So let's practice the thing you want to do as opposed to assuming that getting the body is going to allow you the opportunity to do the thing you want to do. That's right. Okay, cool. Next one. Lack of preparation. What's this one all about? Um, I don't think it really needs explanation, but it really is that. If, if having healthier eating habits is what you want, then one, identify the things that make healthy eating possible. It doesn't necessarily mean you're cutting foods out or vilifying things, but look at the behaviors and then how can you set yourself up for success to always have that behavior be like a default. Mm -hmm. So I always say create a bare minimum, minimum, meaning at your laziest, what can you do right now? So let's use food prep, typical thing. One of the things that always you know trips people up is I don't want to eat the same food over and over. Okay, fine. But if you cook, say, two different types of meats, for instance, how can you repurpose those to make a different meal? You have the food in your fridge. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to buy anything extra. What can you do that will make you um, have access to that when, say, you're hungry? So if at 10 p.m. at night you're hungry, instead of ordering a pizza, you got food in your fridge. So it makes that much easier for you to access it mm -hmm. if creating your meals ahead of time helps you stay on top of your meals then do that if buying pre-chopped food means you're that's one less thing to stress over when it comes to meal prep that saves you time mm -hmm. if you know having your grocery delivered saves you time you don't have to get dressed leave your house that's one way to be prepared so Prep, lack of preparation, meaning not setting yourself up for success. And by success, I mean doing the things you say you want to do or participating in the healthy habits that you want to actually build. If you don't prepare, then chances are you won't follow through. It's you, as simple as that. Yeah, you also, it's interesting that you said that because it's a very common thing that people say when you try to introduce them into eating healthier, right? I don't want to eat the same food over and over and over. But yet you'll, your in, instant default is ordering the same food over and over and over that you're already used to. Like, I feel like a pizza. I feel like a burger. Um, or I feel like you. people don't have a – our life is not the Cheesecake Factory menu. You know, it's literally, what? you know, we it's, it's more of like three, four, five items that are our go-to, and we kind of switch that out a little bit. So when it comes to lack of preparation, what are some of these things – because in all reality, a lot of these things that people are hooked on is because of the combination of ingredients that they're using. So instantly, you're you're going to get hooked on them because most of the time, all those things have sugar in them, right? Your pizza has sugar in it. All Your burger, most likely some form or another, has some kind of sugar in it, the way they prep most restaurants, prep their items and stuff, right? So what are some of the things that people can do to enhance the flavor in their food? So this is a way of preparation as well to get them excited about making their own meals so that they're not eating the same thing or it's not boring. 
I think before I answer that, the biggest thing why people seem to think their food is boring is because they cut themselves off from foods. So if you're trying to eat healthy, you assume you have to cut out everything that's not healthy. So maybe you enjoy, I don't know, those frozen um, sweet potato fries. I'll just use it as an example. Um, you're like oh my god that's not healthy so you completely cut it out and you crave these things and the things you crave the more you you restrict them I mean the more you're going to crave them Mm. so the lack of variety is because people cut themselves off from a lot of things as it relates to making your food um, a little more I don't know less boring switch it up it really is simple switch it up change up your seasonings I, I'm a big, big, big believer in flavoring your food. That's the Caribbean. That's the Jamaican in me. Mm-hmm. Um, so having fresh ingredients, like I use wet seasoning, for instance. And I kid you not, I use this wet seasoning on every single thing. Like I might change the sauce, but the seasoning goes on everything because what? It's less prep, less work. My food is flavorful, and I change the flavor of the food with the seasoning that I use. Mm. So I might use barbecue, I might use teriyaki sauce, um, and then I will just watch my ingredients, just change out ingredients so they're a little more friendly to me if I want. So if I'm trying to cut sugar out, for instance, I'm going to buy things that have no sugar in them or no added sugar. And that makes it easy because I can still use my ketchup, for instance. They have no sugar ketchup. You have some of those. And use it to make my barbecue sauce. I don't have to worry about adding that sugar to it. And I get my barbecue sauce. I enjoy my food. I enjoy my chicken. So one of the things you want to change up your flavors. You can do Italian. You can do jerk. You can do uh, Mexican. Change up the flavor of your food. Rotate your, your food. So rotate your proteins. Rotate your carbs. Change up your veggies. It's all. It's the same variety that you're shopping for. If you, when you take when you buy takeout, is the same variety you can provide yourself with by having multiple seasonings available or having a set. So you don't have to buy the whole store. Maybe you have three. Mm. Just have three different things that you rotate and be open to experimenting. And I think honestly, I think this one can go both ways because um, for someone like me, who let's be honest, him and his mom cook pretty much all of my food. But before I had Julian in my life, I preferred to eat really boring. Like I just would buy the rotisserie chicken from Whole Foods or I literally, I told him the other day, I would eat like deli meat for my meat at dinner sometimes and I would have like some grapes, you know, and there was no seasoning, there was no flavor and I was totally fine with it. Now I appreciate all the flavor that has come into my life since then. But for someone like me, I would be like, I don't need, I don't want recipes. Like, I don't want to try to like have a different type of veggie every single time. And that's like overwhelming to me. So if, you know, if I was on my own again, I would probably go back to eating pretty boring. And I think it's okay for people to be okay with that yeah, too. It is. I think that goes back to what Shanique is saying though. That requires awareness of what you like, what's important to you, how it makes you feel. And it seems people may be distracted from that because they see other people eating a different vegetable at every meal or using different seasonings. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that is that is exactly it. You honestly go with what works for you. And if switching out your veggies every two days is stressful, that's that sounds stressful for me. I buy the Costco bag of salad and that's me all week. Eat and then my husband gets lettuce. That's it. (laughs) That's how basic we are with vegetables. But if it is overwhelming, you're not going to do it. So it's totally okay to go basic. If you don't want to flavor your food, that's fine. Go with what works for you. Yeah. And I would say too, um, one of the things that we were talking about, because you said like at your laziest, what can you have around? Um, and we talked earlier about frozen, even fruits and veggies. Like we run out of fruit and veggies pretty commonly. And then it's like, oh crap, like Julian's got to go to Costco or we got to go pick something up or whatever. And just having some stuff in the freezer for those days when things like that happen. We were talking this morning about a lot of the issues that we see with people who are trying to talk about nutrition on social media or whatever is that they're food snobs and they're like frozen. Like, no, it's got to be like organic pasture raised this and that or it's no good. And that's not realistic uh, budget wise for a lot of people or just, you know, 
for those moments when maybe that's all you can find, all that you have available. Can you talk a little bit more about that? First of all, nobody's got time to go searching for these types of foods. Like, <laughs> honestly, that means you probably have to go to three different grocery stores. I don't have that kind of time. So Costco is going to get, I'm going to buy some frozen fruit, some frozen veggies. Why? Because I know there are going to be moments when I'm not going to want to prep anything. So that's the easiest thing to grab for. Um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with using, and this goes back again to using what you've got available. If frozen veggies is what you have available, that's great. If frozen fruit is all you have available at the moment, that's also great. Can works as well. Sure, you can pay attention to the labels, like if it's got extra preservatives in there, but that's, to that's a personal preference. Some people don't really care. Others just need to get some vegetables on their plate. And if that works, that works. Having things like, you know, canned foods in your, in your pantry. Like I buy sachet tuna for the specific reason that there are going to be those days when I am lazy. I don't want to turn on the stove. I don't want to look in the refrigerator. I know I've got some tuna. I grab two slices of bread and some lettuce, make a sandwich, call it a day. That's it. So like I said, at my laziest, I'm setting myself up because it means I don't have to think about it. You don't have to expend any energy. So identifying what, you know, is easy for you in those moments, I think is super important. So relying on um, those things, whether it's buying canned and sachet type, you know, proteins or pre-cut stuff or pre-packaged stuff, identifying what makes sense for you in those moments is super important. And again, you don't have to go fresh, grass-fed, um, pasteurized all the time. Go with what works in the moment, in any given situation, because situations will change. You might be traveling. You might be at your in-laws where they don't have the kind of food that you eat. Um, you might be sick, that type of thing. You just got to work with what you have. 100%. Okay, so I really love what we titled this next one. Um, I think people are going to like this one. Peacocking your nutrition. So in the workouts, we talk about peacocking the workout where you just, it's 10 rounds. You come out, do the first round unbroken in 45 seconds, and you're like, oh, man, I'm crushing this. And then by round four, you're like doing singles. What does that mean when we're talking about nutrition? When it comes to nutrition, it, I, I break it up into a phrase where you – you overestimate your willpower and underestimate your excuses. What that means is you go into it with great intentions, you're hype, you're motivated, and you think, yes, I can do it exactly like this. I can go in, have, you know, show up all five, six days and make sure I eat all my prepped meals. But then by day three, your kid's sick, um, you had a stressful day at work, um, you're in a terrible mood, and all of that goes down the drain. So right there is your peacocking, right? It's, it's a classic example when we do the challenges, when we come around to New Year's, when we, you know, trying to get the summer body or whatever the case might be, we go into these things with expect high, high expectations. When quite frankly, it would, it would probably be better served just going in with the idea, I'm just going to do what I can when I can with what I have and, you know, see if I can stay consistent. Can I do this every single day, whether I'm, things are great or things are shitty. Do you have the same problem that we have? Because I think one of the big problems, and we saw it this year with the New Year's challenge, it's so funny, um, people's mentality, where we gave them, the tasks were very simple and there was like pretty good room for error for the New Year's challenge. And a lot of people were like, this is too easy. This is, too, I want more, more. And we were talking about it at breakfast today. Like people want the hardcore, like give me, the, no, no, no. I don't want baby steps. Like give me the whole thing, put me inside the fire. Like I don't want to do any of that. Do you run into that as well with your clients? It's like, if it's, I need to be dying for it to be worth it. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the, that's the mentality that it needs to be hard. And because I'm an adult, we're all adults. So we should be able to do, we should be able to do this when quite frankly, I do run into the same thing, but here's where I, I always challenge. Can you? Like, really, can you? If this is what you can do all the time, you wouldn't need me, one. Mm -hmm. Two, you wouldn't be where you're at trying to do something, trying to make a change. So how about we dial it back and forget what you think you can do? Let's talk about what you can do. What can you do 
right now consistently every single day. And if every single day you can't do X, Y, Z, it means it's too difficult. You got to dial it back. You got to step it back down. You have to go back down a level. Mm. Customize it. Simplify. Um, what was the word I was going to use? Scale. People hate that word. There's just some, I don't know what it is. People hate to use the word scale. But yes, it is something that's not just in the community. It's everywhere, I think. People assume they can do things because we're adults and mm. we need it to be hard for it to be worth it. But it's not worth it if you like just fail or flail right in the middle of it or if you're unable to keep it going. So peacocking your nutrition is classic sabotage technique. And again, I think it's important. I love that all of these really like just interact with each other well because we can go back to that first the first one right paying attention to other people's plates because I was thinking as you were talking um if I looked at m what my plate my plate was 10 years ago it's completely different but I didn't change my plate one time it was a series of changes over years and years and years. It wasn't until when I signed up for street parking, my first Jack by June's challenge, where I was introduced to the idea that you could add vegetables into every meal. And I was like, these people are crazy. But I, I mean, I, I gave it a try. And since 2018, I've had vegetables at every meal, for the most part, there are days when I don't. Um, but yeah, like, if I again, if I look at someone else's plate who's doing something that's just like far beyond what I'm doing, and I think that that's what's required, then I'm setting myself up for failure. If instead I just looked at my plate and said, okay, well, what's one thing from there that I can pull into what I'm currently doing? And I feel like that's more sustainable. Yeah, that's a good one. The, and I mean, we see it, January's big, but we see it. Anytime someone's like, all right, I'm starting over. And it's just like, don't just, just don't start over. Just keep going instead. Like move on a trajectory instead of stop and start and stop and start. And, um, and understand that again, it's something that I say all the time. If you're not planning on sustaining it, then you shouldn't be doing it at all. Unless you're like training for a marathon and I'm going to do it one time. Like, okay, I get like those types of instances where it's like a one-time thing, but in general, we should all be seeking a lifestyle and habits that are sustainable. And oftentimes when people are asking to be like thrown into the flames, they don't want the program that they, that you're, they're going to sustain forever. They want the eight week cut or the, like that sort of thing. And, um, you know, I, I see you talking a lot about that kind of thing on your social media too. Okay. The last one over complicating the basics. And again, like this goes for the workouts, but equally with nutrition. So, what, what were your thoughts on overcomplicating the basics? Making it harder than it really needs to be. Um, and I'll use a classic example of getting protein, veggies, carbs, and some healthy fats on your plate. 99% of the time, if you can manage that, you're doing great. Okay? But somebody's going to get con... Um, somebody's going to be all concerned about how often or what time should I be eating? So meal timing, for instance, if you are, go if you struggle with getting all of those things on your plate, you have no business worrying about meal timing. Like how about let's try to get some veggies in all your meals first, or let's make sure we try to get you eating adequate protein, full stop. Meal timing is irrelevant if you're unable to do that. So other things people might be concerned with. Oh, I need to have a salad a day. I'm like, nobody says you have to have a salad a day or three salads a day. Nobody says you have to have that. You can have three. If you eat four meals for the day, three of your meals can have salad. One can't, or maybe two meals have some veggies. It doesn't even have to be a salad. It could just be a, a part of your plate has got some veggies on it. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a whole salad. So complicate, overcomplicating the basics is paying attention to stuff that are irrelevant in the grand scheme of things. Adding things like, BCAAs. I'm like, BCAAs don't make sense if you are not eating enough protein throughout the day, full stop. You know, having a pre-workout or post-workout, you know, energy drink is irrelevant if your whole nutrition sucks. So that's what I mean when I talk about overcomplicating the basics, which a lot of people do when they go into challenges or they're just trying to 
overall their nutrition at one time in one go. One of the things that I love asking people when they're like, what should my, um, my macro breakdown be like ratio of protein, carbs, and fat? One of my favorite questions to ask is like, well, hold on. What did you eat for breakfast today? And they're like, oh yeah, uh, Lucky Charms. And I'm like, okay, well, let's like start with exactly what you're saying. Like just balancing your plate for one, even if it's just one meal a day, like let's tr start there before you start trying to dial in. Do I need 35% carbs or 40% carbs or what supplements should I be taking in this and that? It's like, no, no, no. Like you're five steps ahead of where you maybe ever need to be, but for sure where you are at right now. Yeah, it goes with, again, when you're starting those New Year's diets or diets in general, people are like, I'm gonna cut out all these things when if breakfast is just coffee, <laughs> you might want to start with having some breakfast first. Or if you know you are you're concerned more with um, eating a protein shake at night. I'm like, well, protein shake at night, great. But how are your meals for the rest of the day? Because if you're starving at the end of the night because you're not eating all day, then we need to fix just you eating generally. You know, so the basics will never fail. Basics always work. And more and more, if we pay attention to the basics, then we'll, everything else will take care of itself, I think. Absolutely. And that's like, su it's such a more than nothing thing. I get hit up by moms a lot. Um, and they're like, I just can't do, like, I just don't eat all day long. Like, I can't do what you do because they're, I mean, I, I'm very lucky. His mom watches our kids during the day while we work. And so I have a lot more time to eat and things like that. And I know the, there are stay-at-home moms. I can think of one of my mom friends in particular who has six children and is constantly telling me like i can't i don't have enough time to eat and i'm like girl grab some deli meat or make a protein shake like don't try to copy what i'm doing my life is different than yours yeah we're both moms and we have kids and everything like that but um simplify it just you got to get something in and then there's this idea while it's ideal if you can have multiple meals for the day so four meals five meals for the day if your life is just not set up for you to have four, five meals for the day, when you do get the opportunity to have a meal, have a proper meal, have a big meal. If it means you only have two meals for the day, make those two meals count. Mm -hmm. So in the case of a busy mom, for instance, if she gets a breather to have a meal and she goes for a meal, I mean, I have no kids, so I honestly can't relate to any struggles with moms have. But one thing I can say is start with what you have and if all you have is two meals where you can actually eat make those two meals count you know what i mean and try every you know everywhere else that you can to fit something in so the deli meat speaking of which i use deli meat often to fill needs when i'm in a rush or stressed you know and this is where having certain things available for yourself makes it a little easier so do it's people seem to think i, I feel like i'm repeating this a lot and i do do what you can with what you have because at the end of it that's the basics and that's really what all you need because your moms are not trying to win competitions they're just trying to take care of their bodies right i mean People they're in just general. trying to survive to be honest there you go <laughs> and what do you need more for survival than just making sure you have enough energy and exactly. sustenance so stick with the basics man awesome well, I feel like we have a couple questions that we can answer before we log off of this week's episode. What do you got for us, Nicole? All right. Earlier, you guys talked about trying to be perfect. What advice would you have for someone who might have a tendency to be overly obsessive? Well, this is where the awareness piece comes in. Um, the, the obsession stems from someplace, and it's key to identify where that's coming from because until you do you honestly really can't address you can't address it so the awareness piece meaning i make it make it so that you take a breath or a pause the power of the pause is important you take a pause at those moments you find yourself obsessing why are you obsessing what makes this something that you need to stress over and if it's something that you can let go of then let go. But what's stopping you from letting go of it or letting go of it being perfect? What makes it not sustainable for you or not sustainable? What makes it difficult for you to let it go? I think food is a place where people feel like it's, it's one part of their life that they can control. 
And what they're really looking for is much, much deeper than fixing their nutrition can provide. And it's just a control thing. And, and we see that sometimes. And now obviously in street parking, we're not working as often one-on-one -on -one and, and building relationships with people as maybe you are with your one-on-one. -on -one. Do you ever send, do you ever straight up just tell people like, listen, this is not a food thing. Like you need maybe yeah. like some actual like therapy yeah. or some time away from, I don't want you actually thinking about food at all. Yeah, I've worked with recovering, um, people recovering from eating disorders that have to work specifically with um, eating disorder professionals, specialists, because that's out of my scope. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said the awareness key piece is important because if you are unable to find that awareness or be able to pinpoint, then it means that anything you do with the food is not going to fix whatever mm -hmm. you're trying to fix mm -hmm. because you're trying to fix something while you're particularly obsessive about it. So that requires much, much deeper help and would be outside of my scope, for instance, and probably outside of y'all's scope. So I, being able to identify that is important and refer out is also important. Earlier you talked about body signals. Um, for someone who doesn't really have experience recognizing when they're full, uh, where can you start? How do you get a little bit more in touch with knowing well, when to stop eating? For something like this, you know, you just got to make it a point to slow down your eating I know that may not come natural for a lot of people because when you're hungry, naturally, you get food in front of you, you scarf it down, and you're eating up super fast, right? It takes a while for your body to register that it's actually being fueled up and that it actually signals that you're full, right? That's a that's a chemical thing there. Um, so make it a point. At first, it might seem awkward because it is, right? We're so used to our lives being so fast-paced, but... I mean, if you have to set a timer until it becomes a habit, put 15 minutes on the clock, you know, and of course, this is like, there's many ways you can go about this, but this is very general. And I hope that you have somewhere in there for 15 minutes to kind of just set it and try to finish your meal within 15 minutes and see how long before your body actually starts telling you, oh, you're getting full and see where you're at with your plate. And that would say that's like a good first starting step for when it comes to that. Uh, one trick that I learned was to put my fork down between bites and just chew my food well. And that helped tremendously. I would say especially do that on dates. <laughs> <laughs> and also just keep in mind, too, that's where we, we talk about having a balanced meal. Because if you're lacking a meal that doesn't have um, uh, protein or fat in it, good luck trying to feel full anytime. You're going to be eating and eating and eating. And that's what happens. A lot of people, you know, don't have balanced meals. So if you have a balanced meal, the fat and the protein are going to help with satiety. So just make sure you have that in your meals as well. And also it, and I go back to using the same phrase, the power of the pause. Um, Carolina and Jeb might, <laughs> might agree with me here. Honestly, it sometimes takes taking a breath to figure out just where your body is as it relates to your hunger how hungry or how full you are because if you're just eating and just you know you're not taking a breath you're unable to give your body time to catch up with your brain or your brain to catch up with your your body what i'm i don't know which one but the point is taking that breath gives you a moment to sense your body if you take a big breath let it out you sense your body the same the same way putting your fork down does you know um and chewing your food, literally just chewing a food, paying attention, being a little more mindful. Those things are great ways to um, help you tune into your body's fullness or satiety. It could also be a very physical sensation. Now, if you're eating past that point where, okay, I need to loosen my belt buckle now or my stomach is really uncomfortable, then that's something, that's a clear sign that, yeah, you are way past it. All right, last question. Do you have any advice for someone struggling with specifically craving sweets or nighttime snacking? Oh. Uh, she was she was waiting for this one, Nicole. Um, I know we talked about earlier when we were chatting away that a lot of times that comes down to that you just didn't eat enough during the day. Um, 
it's also the time if you go back to and i'll let you kind of chat about that it's also the time of day where you might not have a bunch of distractions anymore and now like the like I mean, our personal thoughts and feelings and emotions that we're choosing not to deal with are just kind of there because it's nighttime and we're not at work anymore and we're not, you know, running around doing a bunch of million things and they're comfort foods and they're called comfort foods for a reason and people grab them in those situations because, you know, they're going to make you feel all warm and cozy inside and a lot of times I think that's why that happens more in the evening than during the busy times of day. Agreed. Um, pretty much exactly what Miranda said. Um, when it comes to the sweet, it goes back to two things. It could be you're hungry, you could be hungry, or it could be because you're restricting food. You're restricting some of the things that you enjoy that might have some sweet element in there. I am a big proponent of in, of sprinkling these out, not necessarily every day or in every meal, but I believe if you feel for a piece of chocolate, you could have a piece of chocolate with you know with lunch or even with dinner. Because the more you restrict yourself, is the more you're going to crave it. And this is where that, that slowing down after the day ends and you're like, okay, now I'm left with all of these feelings that I haven't dealt with. And that craving pops up even more. You're going to sub succumb to the craving. So identifying whether or not your needs are being met, that's in terms of hunger plus other types of needs. Because again, it's never just about food. Sometimes it is, but for the most part, it really isn't. So if we can identify whether or not we've fed ourselves properly throughout the day and if we're dealing with our shit <laughs> as best as we can, then we should be able to, you know, you know, tackle or lessen the impact of, you know, running into that mindless snacking or mindless eating. And speaking of mindless, it also comes down to being a little more mindful because I'm sure you might be watching a game or you might be watching a movie and you want some popcorn. Sure, have some popcorn. But if you're not staying in the moment and being aware, you're going to and take out the whole bag. Chances are by the time you're 15 minutes or 20 minutes in, that whole bag is going to be done. Whereas if you had given yourself permission to enjoy the popcorn and take a breather between each bite and then truly enjoy the experience, you're less likely to polish off the whole bag you know because you gave yourself the comfort of having the food but also the knowledge that it's there when you are ready to have it it's a it's always available and i think that's part of it we restrict ourselves we say we can't have it we're not allowed and therefore it becomes enticing so it's in the bag in the cupboard but you're thinking i can't have it it's not allowed but you're hearing it talk to you Shitty, come and have me come and have me that type of thing so it's forbidden fruit basically so you're always going to crave it so allow yourself to have some recognize when you're hungry recognize if your needs are being met and these are just some simple ways you could probably you know start addressing those things all right and that will wrap up this week's episode of the coaches roundtable it was awesome having Shanik in from out of town as a guest um this week which was awesome so thank you so much for stopping by and being a part of this roundtable um, you know, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe this video, share it with anybody that you guys feel would benefit from watching this. And we will check in with you guys in two weeks. Yeah, we'll be back in two weeks. I think we're going to do a special, another special guest in two weeks. So we'll, we'll share with you guys who that is. If you're a part of the street parking members and you would like to watch Tanique work out with us today, join us in a little bit for the live demo on the at street parking members, Instagram, we're going to do Shani tomorrow's back. workout. She wants as big of an audience as possible.